Colgate Tooth Powder's Theater of Romance brings you in just a moment Miss Geraldine Fitzgerald in Rendezvous at Meyerling. But first, latest reports from doctors on the 14-day palm olive plan. Kansas City reports better complexions for 93%. New Orleans reports better complexions for 97%. In city after city, doctors tested the 14-day palm olive plan on all types of skin. And two out of three of all women tested got better complexions in 14 days. What is this 14-day palm olive plan? Wash your face three times a day with palm olive soap. Then each time take 60 seconds more to massage palm olive's lovely soft lather onto your skin as you would a cream. Then rinse. This cleansing massage with palm olive's lather brings your skin its full beautifying effect. See what palm olive can do for your skin in 14 days. Remember, doctors prove palm olive's beauty results. Tonight and every Tuesday night, Colgate Tooth Powder brings you the theater of romance. Featuring each week your favorite stars and favorite stories and plays, especially adapted for radio. And here is your host to tell you about tonight's presentation, Rendezvous at Meyerly, starring Geraldine Fitzgerald with Carl Swenson. Good evening. There are many stories and many legends about the romance of Marie Vecchera and Crown Prince Rudolph. The actual historic facts have been set down for all to read. But the events leading up to those happenings have been cloaked in legends. Here, then, is one of them, Rendezvous at Myerling. It starts at one of Vienna's masked balls. Marie Vecchera was there with her parents, and early in the evening she stepped out on the balcony. And there... Now, what is such a pretty young lady doing all by herself out here on the balcony? Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't know anyone was out here. I was waiting for my partner. I don't go. Well, I can't stay out here after all. I don't know you. But I don't know you. I'm willing to take a chance. After all, this is a masked ball. A great many strangers will get acquainted tonight on the pretext of pretending they're talking to an old friend. <laughs> I I don't know you. Do I? No, not yet. Isn't it strange? I feel as though I do. Isn't it strange? So do I. Will you dance? Oh, yes. I'd love to. <laughs> There is something about the way you fit into my arms that is just about perfect. Thank you, but... What? I really should leave you. I have a partner. Oh, do you think that he may come looking for you? Oh, definitely. He's a very conscientious young man. Do you know what I do about conscientious people? What? Run away from me. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Look at that moon. It's a wonderful night, isn't it? I ordered this. Especially for you. I called in um, Alphonse just before I left for the ball. Alphonse is my man. Alphonse, I said, I want a very special moon tonight because I am going to meet a very lovely young lady. You may be disappointed when I take off my mask. No. You take my arm? Let's walk along the Danube and pretend that we've walked here every night for the past three months. Why three months? Well, because with a... Three months' acquaintance behind us, you couldn't possibly be offended if I kissed you. I am going to kiss you, you know. You're... You're very sure of yourself, aren't you? Mm-hmm. I am tonight. I don't know why. I only know tonight that we had to meet and that I had to kiss you. Darling, I've waited a long time for you and for that kiss. I've waited a very long time. Take off the mask. Take off yours. Hello, my darling. Hello, my darling. Look, it's almost daylight. This has been the most beautiful evening of my life. Yes, I'm sorry it's over. Come, I'll take you to the door. When will I see you again? I don't know. Uh, as soon as possible. Isn't it funny? I don't know who you are or anything about you. I don't even know your name. 
I only know that there's always been a loneliness inside of me, and, and now it's gone. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so very sweet. Does it matter that you don't know my name or who I am? No. All that matters is that at last I've met you. Good night, darling. Good night. Well, Marie, where have you been? Your father and I were nearly frantic. Who did you leave the ball with? Oh, Mama, you'd never understand. You and I'll speak further about this tonight. Go to your bed. I suppose you've forgotten that you're to be presented to the Empress this afternoon? I had forgotten. I'd forgotten everything in the world. Your Majesty, the Baroness Fitzgerald and her daughter. Baroness Marie Fitzgerald. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Your daughter is very lovely, Baroness Fitzgerald. Your Majesty is most gracious. Oh, Rudolph, come and meet the Baroness Vichera and her daughter, Marie. This is my son, Crown Prince Rudolph. Baroness Vichera? And the Baroness Marie Vichera. Baroness. It's indeed a pleasure to meet you both. Isn't Stephanie coming to the reception, Rudolph? Uh, no, Mother, she isn't feeling very well today. Rudolph's wife is not as strong as our Austrian girls. Won't you introduce Marie to some of the others, Rudolph, while I have a chat with her mother? I should be delighted. Will you take my arm, Baroness? With, with pleasure. Your Highness. Come in the library a moment. I must talk to you. You're sorry you came, aren't you? If you hadn't come, last night might have remained something very beautiful to you. Last night is something very beautiful to me and always will be. Oh, darling. You see, I could have told you who I was, but I was afraid you'd run away. Are you in love with Stephanie? No, I'm in love with you. I've never been in love in my life until now. Mary, what are we to do? What can we do? But well, there are two things. Either see each other or not see each other. The wise thing is... Not exactly the happy thing, is it? No, Mary, don't turn away from me. Look at me. We had to meet. We belong together, Mary. Oh, just... please, don't put your arms around me. You're a prince and married. You can never belong to what me. What kind of a marriage is it? Because the heads of two governments think a marriage is political, does that make it good and right and fine? A marriage is only good when it's between two people who want to live together because they cannot bear to live apart from one another. Oh, Mary... If I could marry you, that would be a marriage like there never was, this side of heaven or hell. Don't. Don't say those things. Let's not talk of what might have been or should have Mary, been. Mary, the hours we live run out swiftly. We're already late. Let's take the hours that we still have and whatever measure of happiness life will give us. And how will it end? I don't know. But if it matters how it ends... Then you must go now, Marie. I, I won't follow you. I won't ever try to see you again. I respect your judgment. Well, Marie? Oh, my darling. My darling. I cannot say I will not see you again. Doesn't matter how it ends if I can be with you. I don't know whether it's wrong or right or good or bad. I only know I love you. And I must see you. Or I will die. Marie... Let's take the hours and live them as they come, without question, without regrets, until the end. If sorrow comes... When sorrow comes... When sorrow comes, we'll meet it together. Now, don't cry. Please don't cry, Marie. I think a love like ours, Rudolph, is always set to tears. No. This hour will be gay. From the beginning, it'll be gay. From the beginning until the ending... In just a moment, we'll bring you the second act of Rendezvous at Meyerling. But first... News call, gate to powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and 
is the fragrance of the flower of love. If that flower is within your grasp, don't let its perfume vanish. Don't let a little breath of trouble blow it away. No, I hope you won't let unpleasing breath ruin your romance. Remember this, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. So the thing to do, of course, is brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate tooth powder. And as for cleaning your teeth, no dentifrice at any price will clean your teeth more quickly and thoroughly. Remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. And now the second act of Rendezvous at Miling, starring Geraldine Fitzgerald. you've heard about Crown Prince Rudolph and that girl, that Baroness Vachera. I should say I have. Everyone in Austria has heard about them, shameless pair. I saw them myself last night, dancing at Fogarten. I love to dance with you. You have wings when you dance. It's because I'm dancing with you. Everybody's looking at us. Oh, no. There are no people here. No? We're dancing across a star. And there isn't another human being in sight. And that orchestra is an astral orchestra of 1,000 violins. Let's dance forever. Oh, yes. Let's dance forever. I'm telling you, I saw them with my own eyes outside the city, arm in arm. Ask me for something. Some present that would make you happy. I'd like to give you the world. You have given me the world. There's nothing that would make you more happy. Yes? There is. But you couldn't give it to me, Rudolph. But tell me. I'd like a house. Somewhere out here beside the Danube that you would be the heart of. A friendly house where we could invite the people we love to come and laugh with us. That would stretch its walls to make room for two or three little boys who'd look like you and scowl like you and smile that same quick smile that makes my heart turn over. Oh, Rudolph. Rudolph. My dear. You see... I told you you couldn't give it to me. No, I can't. The world has no place in it for you and me. See, the world has locked its doors and set its words against us. We're homeless and kinless. You are my world. You're my life, my love and my happiness. You're my tears and my anger. You're my joy and my heartbreak. I'll never give you up, Mary. Even though I die for it, I'll never give you up. Oh, Rudolph. Even though I die for it, I'll never give you up. Mary, you are never to see Crown Prince Rudolph again. You're behaving shamelessly. Sneaking out at all hours, telling me you're going to meet some friend in the afternoon and meeting that man. Constantly lying, deceiving. For a year this has been going on, in spite of everything I've said... I'm ashamed to have to acknowledge you as my daughter. Oh, Mother, please. Please listen to me. Try to understand. I shall never understand. Nor do I want to understand. What is right is right, and what is wrong is wrong. There is no compromise that can be made with honor. Rudolph is married, and he is the future ruler of all. I love him. You have no right to love him. Do you think you can say you must not love, and that that will make a difference? We didn't choose to fall in love. We didn't plan it. It, it just happened. The moment I looked at him, it was like coming home. I know he's married. I know he's the future emperor, but knowing it doesn't make any difference. Because we belong together. Together we are somehow complete and content. And apart, neither of us have anything. If that were not true of him, too, then I would do as you are. You're a wicked, shameless girl. You shall not. You cannot make me ashamed of my love. It is my pride. It is my honor. It is my life. Mary. You are never to see the crown prince again. This disgraceful affair is going to end right now and forever.
Bell. There's no use in any further discussion. I forbid you to see this woman again. Father, you don't understand. You'll never understand. No, I don't understand. What kind of a man are you? What kind of a prince? You have no right to study the Habsburg name. You're disgracing your country and the throne that you'll inherit. I order you to put this woman from your life. You're a prince of the House of Habsburg. Your dignity and honor is the dignity and honor of the entire lineage. And if I refuse to do as you ask? Then I will take matters into my own hands and see that she's sent where you'll never see her again. Well, Rudolph. Very well, Father. I'll do as you ask. I'll meet her just once more and tell her. And then you'll have nothing to fear from me again. I... I don't mean to be unfeeling, Rudolph. I... I know what it is to love. But love must be put aside if it is at odds with honor. Uh, when... When will you tell her? I was going for a day's hunting at Myerling. I'll take her with me. You surely cannot deny me the right to tell her in my own way. You give me your word that this will be your last rendezvous? Yes. Our meeting at Myerling will be our last rendezvous. <laughs> Look, the stars are fading. You know, it's a strange feeling to look at the stars and the moon and know that, that you'll never see them again. You suddenly feel that you should look for a long time, that you should look long and hard at everything. No, you don't have to die, Marie. I'll leave you behind if you like. You're young, you're lovely, you've much to live for. I have nothing to live for in a world that you have left. Come, sit beside the fire with me for a little while. If you like. Let me put my arm around you. Mm. Tell me, if we had that house that you wanted, what would it have been like? Well, every morning I would have gotten up early and fixed your breakfast. And then we would have had it in front of the fire. And then I would have walked with you to get the carriage and ridden the ways with you. Then walked home. Where would I be going? To work. Oh, I see. <laughs> and then I would have cleaned the house and dusted and made everything right for you to come home to. And in the afternoon, the boys and I would have had a frolic outside. And after it, I'd get them all scrubbed and clean and ready for their father. And then you'd come home. And we'd have dinner and tuck the children in bed. And then we'd sit like this, night after night, growing old and growing old together. I'd have liked that house. I wish this world had a house for us, Marie. I know. You saw that we fell in love. Have you any regrets? Oh, regrets, not one. I've had a year of more happiness than most people have in a lifetime. Well, we've completed our lifetime in this year, Marie. I know. But it's been beautiful. Maybe the beauty hurt a little now and then when people closed in on it. But even the pain was beautiful. Oh, Rudolph... The only thing that frightens me, the only thing that makes me sorry to go is that we're facing the unknown now. I may never feel your arms or your lips again. I may never find you no, again. you'll find me. It'll only be a step. We'll cross the threshold together. And then we'll find peace. You see, there's no peace on earth but us, my darling. There never would be. I know. And all day, I've been praying that we will find it now. Look, my darling, it's almost dawn. Do you remember the first night we met, the first time we saw the dawn together? No, it's the last time in this world. We've used up the hours, Marie. Now it's the last hour. Almost the last moment. Here, let me carry you up. Kiss me goodnight, Rudolph. Oh, my darling. Good night, my darling. Sweet dreams. God be with you. Until we meet again. Rudolph, there's a line. Do you remember it? Parting is such sweet sorrow. But we shall meet again when it be morrow. We shall meet again. We shall meet again. Look, hmm? the sun's coming up. Yes. We shall be free before it fully rises. We promised it would be our last rendezvous. 
We've kept our word. Close your eyes, my darling. Close your eyes. We shall meet again. When it be morrow. <laughs> they kept the last rendezvous at Myerling, and the world that had denied them the right to love talked about them and wondered about them, and finally wept and left them at peace. Appeal. When a man meets her, his heart begins to race. But it slows down fast, for the facts reveal that lovely Lucille doesn't play the right rules of romance. She forgets all about that little breath of trouble. What a pity if that little breath, I mean unpleasing breath, should ruin your romance. I'll tell you what, brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. Scientific tests prove that Colgate Tooth Powder in seven cases out of ten instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. So use Colgate Tooth Powder for all it's worth. Money can't buy a dentifrice that will clean your teeth better than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Next week, it's our pleasure to bring you the gifted star of radio, stage, and screen, Miss Ruth Chatterton, in No Time for Comedy. A romantic story which is the light, amusing tale of a brilliant actress who finds that her husband doesn't like criticism, even when it will help his career. Until next Tuesday night, when Colgate Tooth Powder's Theater of Romance will bring you Ruth Chatterton in No Time for Comedy, this is your host saying good night and wishing you love, happiness, and romance. In tonight's play, Miss Geraldine Fitzgerald starred in the role of Marie. Rudolph was played by Carl Swenson. Rendezvous at Meyerling was written especially for this program by Gene Holloway. The music was composed and conducted by Ben Ludlow, and the entire production was under the direction of Mark Loeb. <laughs> Ladies, has the double O stopped you from saving and selling your used kitchen fat? The double O is over-optimism. The double O says we've got the Germans almost licked, so no need to save kitchen fats now. But the Germans are not almost licked, and when we do whip the Nazis, we've got the Japs to beat. And Japan has stolen the commercial fats and oils we used to import. So you see, ladies, you can't let up on saving fats. The war machine needs it desperately for medicines, munitions, and scores of vital war supplies. So keep on saving kitchen fat. It doesn't matter how burned or black it is, but please train out the foreign matter. Your butcher pays two red points and four cents for every pound of fat you turn in. Fill a tin and turn it in as often as you can. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>